Welcome back, my name is Aaron Young and in this video, I'm gonna be taking you through the step-by-step -step process of how to set up your Google shopping campaigns. And this is part of my Get Google Ready for 2025 series, where I take you through everything you need to know in order to not only set up, but how to correctly optimize your Google Ads campaigns. And today, the focus is on your shopping campaigns. Now, as we go through this step-by-step -step campaign guide, if you miss any of these steps, don't worry, because if you follow the link in the description below, you can get access to my Google Ads Ads shopping campaign setup guide, which takes you through all of the individual steps with screen shares and instructions so that you don't have to worry about what the next step is when you're setting up your shopping campaigns. So with all that said, let's jump into a screen share so I can show you the step-by-step -step process. All right, let me take you through the step-by-step -step process on how to set up your very own shopping campaign before you can complete the shopping campaign setup, you just need to make sure that you have already got your Google connected to your e-commerce store. And I've just added in this link in through here. And if you open that up, that takes you through the steps of making that connection. So once that is done, you are then able to go through these steps of setting up your very own shopping campaign. So the way that we go through and do this is that we go through into new campaign because this is gonna be a shopping campaign and we're gonna be driving it via revenue so we want this to be generated by sales and what this will do is that this will add in the conversion sales you've got in there now if you do not have a conversion goal set up already you can add this later alternatively if you have multiple conversion actions in there what you can do is you can remove the goal the one thing i would say there is that if you do remove it you're not removing it from the account you're just removing it from the campaign when we set up different bidding options it just means that it won't use that conversion action for the bidding. Once you're happy with that, go through and click continue. And we want this to be a shopping campaign. Next thing you need to do is that you need to make sure that you have got the correct merchant center. If you've got multiple merchant centers, feeds connected to this account, you'll have the option, but just make sure you've got the right one in there. Google will try to push you to performance max. Just select your shopping campaign. And then it's a matter of just going through the steps. So we're going to add in our campaign name. And the thing that I recommend is that you just wanna make sure you've got a good naming convention. And this will just help it later down the track, especially if you've got multiple shopping campaigns that you know what you, which ones are about. Really, really common for e-commerce brands, you might be marketing the same products, but you might have them to different countries. So let's just call this one USA Shopping. And if we were to have another campaign, which is targeting, say for example, Europe, we could call it Europe Shopping. Additional settings in through here. We're happy with any of these. There's nothing really important there that we need to go through because we can do this later. Generally, I look to start at a manual CPC because what we're looking at doing is that we are looking at using shopping to generate as many conversions. So I wouldn't be adding in a target role at the start because we just don't know what is going to be happening from there. Adding in your budget, what I would recommend is I would recommend that you do a quick keyword research so you can kind of see how much on average your cost per click is going to be. What I would say in through here as well is if your CPC is $2, you need to be setting a budget of at least $20. And the reason for that is we want to see at least 10 clicks a day so that we've got enough data to be able to make some optimizations. Ultimately, it, the more clicks you can get, the better, but set that as a minimum benchmark. So we're going to set the budget at $30 a day. In terms of campaign priority, if this is your first shopping feed campaign, you don't need to worry about this. The only time you need to worry about this is if you've got multiple campaigns targeting the same products. And a perfect example of this is that you might have shopping campaign targeting new customers and then an another shopping campaign targeting remarketing audiences. And if you wanted the person to see the remarketing audience, you would set that to high. But because this is going to be the only campaign, let's set that to low. And then in terms of your locations, all you just need to think about is if you have got a campaign and you're running multiple campaigns, if you only want people inside the United States to see your ads, you'll go through and select presence. And then for your ad group names, what I would generally do here is do it around your product category. So let's just say that this is, let's just call this product one or it could be you know, product category two or whatever the situation is there. Now the bid, remembering we said that we know that our bids for this one, let's just say if it's gonna be about $1.50, we would add our bid in at $2. Once again, this can be changed later down the track dependent on the CPC. So let, once you do this, let me just go through and click create campaign because it's not finished yet. And what I mean that it's not finished yet is this has taken us straight into the ad groups. So campaigns, ad groups. What we want to do is we want to add in some different subdivisions. So let's just say for us, we've got four different product types and we only want this product type to be in this ad group. You then go through and add that in there. And then let's just say in our ad groups, so we've got this product one, we wanted to add in a new ad group. This would be product two. We're going to keep that at the same bid. Then when we are in the products where 
I'm going to be targeting these products in here. And just make sure if you are doing this, that you exclude all of the other products Go back into the other ad group. So what we've done in there is in these ad groups, we've got this ad group, which is only targeting one product, this ad group, which is targeting another product. And once we start to see this data, if we see that our CPC in this ad group is say $2.25, we can then increase that to $2.50. Or if we see that this one is you know lower and it's fine at $2, that's fine. So that's the way that we go through and set up multiple ad groups. Just make sure that if you do run multiple ad groups that you need to make sure that you go through and you add in these product filters or these product subdivisions so that you're not, because I have seen this quite a few times where people have set up multiple ad groups, but they haven't gone through and added those subdivisions. So they're just targeting the same products across all of the different ad groups. And that's how you set up your shopping campaigns. And that's how you set up your shopping campaigns inside of Google Ads. So remember, if you missed any of those steps or you wanna get further clarification, just follow the link in the description below so you can get access to my Google Shopping Campaigns setup guide. And remember to not only subscribe, but turn on that notification bell so that you know whenever I release a new video in this series because you don't only need to be setting up your campaigns correctly, you also need to be optimizing all of these campaigns for the best results that you can see in your Google Ads account. Thanks for joining me. And if you wanna watch the rest of the videos that are currently available in this playlist, go through and watch this playlist right here. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video right now. See ya.